Antidepressants are among the most commonly prescribed medications in the United States, and non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, your ibuprofens and indomethacins, are also very frequently used. So logic would dictate that there's a big population of people who are taking both of these at any given time. And this might be problematic because antidepressants, particularly SSRIs, might increase your risk of bleeding by inhibiting serotonin uptake by platelets. And NSAIDs might also affect your bleeding risk. Now, a paper appearing in the BMJ suggests that the combination of these medications may significantly increase the risk of intracerebral hemorrhage. Korean researchers used the Korean National Health Database to identify 5 million people with a new prescription for an antidepressant, and they followed them for 30 days. In that time period, they saw how many got a prescription for an NSAID and how many had an intracerebral hemorrhage. Surprisingly, 50% of this group had a prescription for an NSAID within that 30-day time period, which seemed crazy to me until I learned that you can't buy NSAIDs over the counter in Korea, so there's a big demand for prescriptions. Now, it turned out that those who got NSAIDs had a 60% higher risk of intracerebral hemorrhage than those who didn't get NSAIDs. But the absolute risk was low. You would need to prevent about 250 people from taking NSAIDs to prevent one case of intracerebral hemorrhage. There are a few issues with the study, though, that I wanted to bring out. The elephant in the room here is that people might be taking NSAIDs for symptoms like headaches, which may actually portend an intracerebral hemorrhage. So there may be an issue of reverse causation. Another issue is one of interpretation. There's this feeling that this study demonstrates a synergistic effect between antidepressants and NSAIDs, but everyone in the study got antidepressants. There was no control group in that sense. As such, we can't say anything about whether antidepressants increase the risk of bleeding. We can only say that NSAIDs did it. Finally, the issue of follow-up. These patients were followed for only 30 days, which doesn't answer the clinical question that's relevant to a lot of us, which is what do I tell my patients that are chronically on antidepressants? Should they avoid NSAIDs or not? If we're only looking at the first 30 days, we don't have enough information to answer that question. In the end, we're left waiting for more data and doing what we usually do, which is trying to alleviate our patient's pain as best we can. And that counts whether the pain is physical or mental. For MedPage Today, I'm Perry Wilson.